this is really exciting but like to a certain degree shout out to glenn clark from glenn clark radio because he be having some fire interviews and i am going to leave the link to his interview from today with jeremy fowler that he dropped for all of us for all the world to hear uh, and Jeremy Fowler, of course, is an NFL insider. He works for ESPN right now, so shout out to him. Now, um, Jeremy Fowler, he dropped some interesting gems about the Baltimore Ravens and their quest for a running back. Of course, the report came out last week that the Baltimore Ravens were going to be interested in a running back that has a pedigree. So what, what that means is that it will be a running back that has made a name for himself in the NFL. But then the report that came out today from the interview that Glenn Clark Radio had with Jeremy Fowler, it put a little twist on that. And we're going to get into that. But before we do, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn the notifications on so you don't miss nothing. I don't be one of y'all to miss out on nothing, so subscribe and turn the notice on and leave a like on the video because it helps grow the channel a ton. I love y'all team, keep it clean. I really, really appreciate y'all. I know it's so many Ravens fans that's done for now. They detoxing from the Baltimore Ravens for now. They taking a big break from the Baltimore Ravens for now. But for those of y'all that are still with us, even though I know it can be hard sometimes, even though I know like, oh, I don't want to hear about them Ravens right now. I don't like how this last season went. I get it. Trust me, I do. I really do. But I appreciate y'all sticking it out. Now, uh, to this article, to this report, uh, to this audio. Well, we're not going to listen to it. I'm going to let you listen to it for yourself. But Jeremy Fowler, he has some very interesting things to say about the Baltimore Ravens. He's talked about how uh, the Baltimore Ravens are doing legwork. So they're doing their homework on Derrick Henry, Saquon Barkley, and really just the market. So that's very exciting. Because if the Baltimore Ravens, they're they looking at those guys, they're seeing what it takes, what it would take to have those guys fit into their scheme and their system, and, and just how those guys could be Baltimore Ravens, just how great of a fit they could possibly be. But he did say, uh, but if the market gets to $10 million, they'll probably be out. And I was like, ooh, well, I get that. But and so now when I first saw the headline of that article, I was thinking $10 million, like for a running back, like if you sign a running back to like a two-year $10 million deal, that ain't nothing. That's five mil, that's five mil per. So that's easy money, and especially if it's three mil, ten, I mean three years, 10 mil, but of course it won't be that little, but two years, 10 mil, oh yeah, let's get it, man. But he was talking about 10 mil per because he broke it down and he talked about how with the running backs, uh, he could see if uh, the Ravens may be interested all up until a limit. And a lot of teams may be interested up to a limit, but the Ravens will be interested up to a limit. Uh, and he said he could see some deals being like two years, 20 million, three years, 30 mil. But to where those running backs get heavy incentives in order to achieve that two years, 20 mil, three years, 30 mil, because that would average to 10 mil per. But it would be heavy on the incentives. But something that was very interesting about what he said, um, not even the money part, but about... Derrick Henry and Saquon Barkley specifically he was speaking about Derrick Henry he said the Baltimore Ravens they've been doing their homework on Derrick Henry which we expect uh the Baltimore Ravens they were interested in Derrick Henry this past season again we almost traded for Derrick Henry right before the trade deadline but I don't know what happened everything ended up falling apart but that ended up sort of in some ways it was a blessing but in some ways, it was a curse. The reason it was a blessing, Keaton Mitchell. <laughs> if the Baltimore Ravens would have got Derrick Henry, we might have never heard anything about Keaton Mitchell. But it ended up being a curse because come playoff time, they didn't give it to the running backs because there was no significant investment in the running backs that they had on their roster so they were like, oh, okay, whatever. We ain't got to feed those guys. We ain't feed them money-wise, so we ain't got to feed them with the ball either. So whatever. But anyway, um, with Derrick Henry, Jeremy Fowler talked about how he has been very I-formation dependent throughout his career. And he said, and it's not that the Baltimore Ravens couldn't make it work with Derrick Henry, not that he couldn't be a fit with the Ravens, but he has been very I-formation dependent in the Baltimore Ravens. They like to do so many different things in so many different ways. They don't just line up in I-formation and run the ball. They do it here and there. But, you know, Baltimore Ravens, they in pistol, they in shotgun, they in single back, they in this and that. They got the Heisman formation that they bring out on special occasions. They got all these different kind of running formations. But our formation, it gets thrown in there here and there. 
But um, he was saying that Derrick Henry, that has been a lot of his bread and butter. So it, he didn't say this, but it almost sounded like he felt like Derrick Henry may be a bit limited. He didn't say it, but it kind of sounded like he insinuated to that. Now with Derrick Henry, Derrick Henry is very interesting because I continue to see a lot of discourse about Derrick Henry on my timeline on Twitter. And he's a very interesting prospect, man. Because obviously Derrick Henry is a powerful running back. He's one of those running backs to win. When they get going, they get going. It may start off a little bit slow now. It may take some time. <laughs> what was he finally pick it up? Oh, hey, yeah, hey, that man is a problem, man. So Derrick Henry will be very interesting, man. That's like he is such an intriguing prospect for the Baltimore Ravens. Um, but I think they could find a way. To make it happen um, Now Saquon Barkley Because Jeremy Fowler brought up Saquon Barkley as well And I feel like personally That Saquon Barkley Would be The best and, and Jeremy Fowler called him I think he called them the most Dangerous or the scariest I forgot the word The exact word that he used But he basically said that With Saquon Barkley and the Baltimore Ravens he would have the most potential at the running back position for them. And I agree 1,000% because Saquon Barkley, he's like that. He's like that. But Jeremy Fowler also talked about how a lot of teams are concerned with the tread with Saquon Barkley. He's been in the league for six years, but he's been hurt a lot. He's been hurt a whole lot. And that is the scary part with Saquon Barkley. So I'm, I'm very interested to see how the market goes for a Saquon Barkley because physically he's there like he got strength he got power he got speed he got agility he could catch passes that Saquon to me Saquon Barkley would be the guy at the running back position for the Baltimore Ravens if they were to acquire him but Saquon Barkley just reminds me of J.K. Dobbins they are two different running backs, obviously. Um, I think Saquon Barkley is a bit faster than J.K. Dobbins. I don't know what their 40s were, but to me, when I see them on the field, I feel like Saquon Barkley is a bit faster than him. J.K. Dobbins can still be the home run hitter now when he's healthy, but Saquon Barkley, to me, he got the speed over him. Uh, and agility, Saquon Barkley got it by. He got it by a bit, too. Just the explosiveness overall. Now, J.K. Dobbins ain't no slouch now. This is not a shot at J.K. Dobbins at all. Because J.K. Dobbins, he could be great too. But again, for both of them, it's the same story. It's the injuries. It's the injuries. That is literally the only thing holding them back. Because think about, like, both of them. Both of them can do everything. Both of them. You need them to run up the middle? Okay, they got it. You need them to bounce it to the outside? Okay, they got it. You need them to stiff on a defender? Okay, they got it. You need them to catch pass out of it? Okay, they got it. They got everything, both of them. But the injuries just have killed both of their careers and just held them back so much. And it sucks for them too, man, because it's so much potential right there, right in both of them. Both of them are clear-cut, in my opinion, both of them are clear-cut number one backs. Do it all backs. I was just talking to my guy Jason early today, and he talked about how it just, it just seems like Nowadays with a lot of positions It's guys that specialize in one thing But it's a lot of people that just don't do everything It's not Many do it all Not as many do it all players as they used to be I thought that was interesting But with both of those guys I feel like they can do everything But they just been hurt A lot So with the Baltimore Ravens at the running back position It's man However they decide that they're going to attack this thing It's going to be interesting with J.K. Dobbins, um, he's getting ready to be a free agent. Him, Gus Edwards, getting ready to be free agents. Um, the Baltimore Ravens' current running backs on the roster right now are Justice Hill, healthy, and Keaton Mitchell, unhealthy. Keaton Mitchell, we'll see when he comes back because could he be, be, could he be ready at the start of the season? It's possible. Is it likely? Uh, maybe. But it's possible he's ready at the start of the season. But will he be the Keaton Mitchell of old? It's to be determined. But see, as the Baltimore Ravens, as an organization, as a franchise, and as a business, what's sad about that is that you can't depend on a Keaton Mitchell. 
So not that you move as if Keaton Mitchell is not there, but you got to stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. And I hate that because we love Keaton Mitchell. Oh, my goodness. He like he brought so much excitement back to the running back position, excitement that we hadn't had in a long time at that position in that way. Like it was sort of like – uh, don't get me – it's it's not the same. I know some people going to be, oh, you get a little – it's similar. It's not the exact same, but you know how, like, all right, Flacco won a Super Bowl in the 2012 season. And then after that, um, it, there were some great moments. There were some rude moments. And it was just like, okay, it wasn't anything crazy after that. He still won a playoff game after that. But um, it wasn't anything crazy. But then when we got Lamar, it was like, whoa. It was like new life at the quarterback position with Lamar Jackson. To me, in my opinion, it ain't, it ain't nothing against the other guy. They weren't bad at all. But with Keaton Mitchell, man, he just brought this new life to the running back position for the Baltimore Ravens. Like, new life in a big way. He just brought this excitement, this explosiveness, and it was like, whoa, all right, now let's go, baby. Then he got hurt. And it was like, oh, man. So, Ravens had a... um. They got a predicament at the running back position. Uh, and we, uh, I'm very interested to see how they handle this thing. Very interested to see how they handle it. Very interested to see how, um, what they get done or what they don't get done uh, at the position because this is big, man. Uh, because, again, all your guys are free agents or hurt or, and Justice Hill. So you need more. So there's obviously free agency. There's the draft. Um, and then we'll see how else they decide to address the position. But, whew, Eric DaCosta, man, uh, I do not envy you, my friend. <laughs> but, hey, that's why you get paid the big bucks to do the big jobs and make the big decisions.